So let's jump right into today's agenda. Um, so we'll be providing a brief introduction and demo of three of our newly released adapters. Um, we're going to start out with Fred Lenslick uh, demoing our much requested ServiceNow ITMS, ITSM integration. Uh, from there, we're going to turn it over to Alistair Davidson, who will provide an overview of our Informatica Intelligent Cloud Services adapter and how we're expanding our uh, Informatica capabilities and relationship there. Um, and then we'll turn it back over to Fred, who's going to demo the SAP PI, or Process Integration Adapter. And with what time is left, and I'm, I'm hoping that there will be some, but there probably won't be a whole lot, uh, but with what time is remaining, we'll answer as many questions as we can. Uh, so with that, let's talk logistics. Um, all participants are going to be in listen-only mode. Uh, we will be recording this session and posting it on our customer portal, and it should be posted there early next week. Um, one quick point I do want to make there on the customer portal is we have added a webinar section to our customer portal. So under the support center tab um, on the customer portal, there's a drop down now where there's a section for webinars. So if you click on webinars, it'll take you and we have all the recordings for all of our webinars going back to the end of 2018. So, you know, if you're interested in, you know, the, reviewing the recent cloud webinar, the Explorer webinar, we did a couple uh, uh, a couple months back, you can find all of that information there. Uh, lastly, you can submit questions on the right-hand side of your screen under the Q&A panel, and we'll answer as many of those questions as I mentioned at the end, and those that we don't get to, uh, we will answer and post those answers out on the portal as well. Fred, you can jump to the next one. I have jumped. I'm getting a delay, I believe. So I have not seen it yet. Stacy, are you seeing? Has it jumped for you? It has not. I am on the pre-built, ready-to-run screen. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Oh, there it is. Major delay. Okay. Not sure what happened there. So, <laughs> okay. So, so as all of you know, um, we have a broad library of ready-to-run adapters, agents, developer tools. Um, you know, and these adapters provide pre-built, um, out-of-the-box integration with a lot of the top business applications that are out there, right? So, um, and those applications are continuously changing, and so we're continuously adding new adapters to meet your requirements in these areas. So, you know, we're going to go over three new adapters today, right now, um, but know that there's many more that are coming, right? So we're doing work right now on things like Airflow and the JD Edwards Orchestrator, uh, SAP PO, and a number of others. Um, but we're always looking for feedback. So, you know, let your rep know, let me know, um, reach out, you know, if there are integrations that are of interest to you, um, you can send something to info at titlesoftware.com, et cetera. Um, you know, even just within the last few weeks, I've talked to customers about Tableau and Data Stage, Bond, you know, a number of others. Um, so don't be shy is what I'm saying here. We want to hear from you. Um, the more we hear about a specific integration, um, it gets into, you know, onto our radar and eventually onto our roadmap. So, you know, please reach out, let us know if there's ones that are of interest to you. Um, the picture, one last thing, the picture on the right here um, is taken directly off of our website, so titlesoftware.com. Um, it's under the integrations tab there. So um, you can go there and find a list of all the integrations that we have. You can click on any one of them and get more detailed information, data sheet level information about those integrations. So, you know, if you're a ServiceNow guy, you want to send them some information about, hey, you know, here's what the webinar was about today and, you know, some more additional information, you can go there and you can send them a link to that and they can get information about that. So we've updated it with ServiceNow, SAP PI, under Informatica, you can find the Informatica cloud information. Um, and as we add new adapters, we'll continually um, upgrade or up update this area of our website um, so that you can get that information. Um, so with no further ado, uh, Fred, why don't I turn it over to you and you can take us into the ServiceNow integration. Right, and to help account for the lag, I'll tell you when I'm going to the next uh, screen. You let me know when you can see it. So I'm going to the next screen now. We're, we're there. No lag on that one. Excellent. So we're starting the portion of the webinar in regard to title automation adapter for ServiceNow ITSM. Next slide. 
Uh, in terms of a few major bullets, we're going to integrate title automation and ServiceNow incident response uh, without custom scripting or development. You will be able to manage ServiceNow incidents and streamline the tracking and resolution of system issues causing job failures in title automation. And this happens as a result of your ability to configure title ServiceNow actions and events to match your ServiceNow data schema, mapping title job activity data to the appropriate fields and status codes in your ServiceNow incident management records. Next slide. We can see this diagram. Yes. Oops, sorry. Yeah, yeah. You, you are showing no delay right now. Things are good. Okay, thank you. All right. So, in regard to uh, our, again, we have a ServiceNow adapter, and unlike uh, most adapters, there is no quote unquote ServiceNow job. But what there are are events and actions. So, this first slide is in regard to the adapter actions in ServiceNow. And so uh, we would start here uh, at the bottom left on the blue. We'd be running a job and we would get some sort of event. Let's imagine a failure, et cetera. Uh, that event is going to trigger an action. And in this case, that action is going to be a ServiceNow action. And you'll notice at the top there that the action can uh, either create or update uh, an incident. And for that matter, update more than one uh, table in ServiceNow. So there's an incident table in ServiceNow and there's many other tables in ServiceNow, you'll be able to make different connections that'll be able to update and create uh, uh, values in uh, different tables. Next slide is going to be adapter events in ServiceNow. And here we start on uh, the right-hand side in green is that we are monitoring a ServiceNow incident. And if there's changes that we have uh, set up to look for, uh, that's going to generate an event. Uh, an event in title. So we will set up an event monitor in title to monitor the ServiceNow uh, incident table. And then as a result, as we go down on the left, uh, that event, as you well know, if you're familiar with the event action architecture, can kick off an action. And there's many different types of actions. Actions could be uh, run a job, uh, write to a log, or it could circle back and do another action, a ServiceNow action, uh, to a different table in ServiceNow. Next slide is uh, the introductory slide for the demo. So we'll uh, leave the PowerPoint behind and we'll head into uh, the web client. So you can see I have the ServiceNow adapter highlighted. Uh, we'll take a quick peek at it. Couldn't be easier. What you're going to do is find your ServiceNow URL, know your ServiceNow uh, user. You will have previously, uh, or your administrator will have previously set up that user with the ServiceNow password uh, and set up this connection, uh, hopefully getting the green light, the go light. So in that regard, let's take a quick look at some definitions. We have a couple jobs that are gonna illustrate these actions. A quick little job group. We're gonna zero in and focus on specifically uh, those two ServiceNow events. So here I have a job. In that job, I have events. The first event is shorter than minimum. So if we were to go look at that event, we would say, if this job runs shorter than its minimum time, then trigger these actions. So one action is going to be an alert, you know, and we'll use variables there that say uh, that an event was triggered by a job with a run ID. We'll do another, uh, action here to set the job to external status uh, and if you're not familiar with that that's an indication that uh, someone should look into things rather than just uh, presume uh, that it completed normally or abnormally something's wrong if it ran that short and so uh, you're prompted if there's an external status to a job the idea behind that is to go in look around uh, maybe do an override rerun etc and then finally the one of interest is to create an incident and so let's take a quick look at that. And uh, actually, I might have to make this a little smaller to get everything in there. So notice that this can do an update or this can do a create. Uh, in this particular example, we're going to create an incident. So we'll concentrate on the bottom half of this. And so to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to check boxes of fields that we're going to set, right? So we're going to set this 
uh, field. And by the way, I should back up just a little. What we did here is we picked a connection that we had previously configured with the URL and the user. Uh, when we made uh, this action definition, we had the opportunity to search around for many different types of tables, but this is the incident table in particular. So you could have different connections uh, that are going to different tables. So we're going to the incident table and we're setting a, a field to active to be true. And the ones that have values that aren't checked are not ones that we're setting. So you'll notice that uh, under additional comments, I provided a, a, a phrase here, job name equals, and then that variable will, will be filled. Uh, coming up are a number of different variables. So these are variables that I set up in advance. Uh, these are generic in, in so much as you'll see them uh, in the ServiceNow incident, but I think I created this one to title assigned to and title assignment group. That's what these variables are going to resolve to. But the idea there being that perhaps you want to, uh, uh, perhaps you use ServiceNow for different regions, different subsidiaries, et cetera, you'll be able to pick values from uh, the, the variables menu in order to assign field values. Category is software. Company is going to be title. Contact type is self-service. We used a very specific uh, time and date to match service now. Uh, again, under description, job name equal job name variable. And then specifically, I used the job run ID, okay, the unique identifier of the job run in the short description of the job. So that's going to be an easy way for you to find a job if you're looking in service now for uh, incidents that have been created by title, uh, this is one way to do it is use a unique identifier. So once again, uh, the idea being we have an event, we trigger an action, the action opens an incident. That was the first ServiceNow adapter feature that we looked at. Now, uh, once that job is in service now we're going to be monitoring it or actually what we're going to do is uh, we're going to set this up so that uh, if this job happens to complete normally so this is the same job uh, right now it ran and uh, it ran too short and it became externally defined and what we're going to do is that in the event that this job completes normally we're going to go update the incident and you can kind of see I named it in that fashion, update incident on externally defined set to completed normally. So in this case, similar screen, except now we're doing an update. And so first we need to find the record that we want to update. So we want to look for in the incident table, we want to look for uh, an incident that is active, active is true. And I used a, again, the title assigned to the title group. Here I actually use literals as opposed to variables. So you, and you can see that those aren't actually what I'm looking to ma match against. The only ones that matter are going to be the ones that are checked. So I made it a uh, very specific, clear. I want to look for active title incidents. that unique job run ID. That's the main uh, match. That way there's no mistake as to which record we're going to be updating. Uh, included a, a subcategory that gave me uh, the job name. So once we have that match, we've matched that record. Now we're going to, again, update that record. We're gonna change it from active being true to active being false. We're going to have, change additional comments into title job SLA event logging. So we have a, a job called title job SLA event, and we added that, that phrase as additional comments. Again, look for the checkboxes. Uh, the caller, again, I think it's called title caller. Uh, here we have a string, closed notes. I overrode and reran the job per the run book at this date and at this time. And notice that this is where I'm closing the incident, right? Automatically closing the incident uh, without any operator intervention. 
other than the fact that we're going to rerun the job and it's going to complete normal. Uh, past that, we set the incident state to closed. We say how it got closed, when it got closed, who it got closed by, and we set the state to closed. And a couple other ones, user input with the job status. We'll be updating the record in the incident from the old status to the new status. So the updated job status is actually going to become uh, completed normally. So now that we understand uh, that how we've set up a job with a couple different events, let's go take a look at job activity. And in particular, let's take a look at service now. I have a job, it ran. It got set to externally defined. I'm going to go in, take a look. Yeah. Look at the output. I think I'm going to uh, look at the notes. Uh, if it fails with externally defined, try a one time override with a value of 63. Rerun the job. If it completes normally, the SN incident that was created. Uh, by completing externally defined will now be closed automatically by a ServiceNow adapter update incident action. So let's do that. Let's override this, change it to 63, say OK, one time override, rerun the job. And that's going to take a minute. So we'll rerun the job. No, not all the jobs, just that one job. Let's go take a look at service now. Um, I've already got it filtered for title. This was uh, right now I have an active incident, right? Active is true. Let's kind of slide and look at the columns. Company is title. Job name is the title. Job SLA event example. Uh, last known status externally defined. Uh, when you hang over some of these system administrator comments, you'll get, you know, similar notes. Hey, this is the triggering event, uh, shorter than uh, minimal event. The state is in progress. The assignment group, the assignment business service. Again, another. Uh, assigned to. But right now, resolved is empty, et cetera. We'll go back and check and see. Has our job completed normally yet? Remember what's going to happen is if it completes normally, then we're going to see an event. We have a, and we're also, and that's going to be shorter. Well, we'll, we'll find this later. I want to. I want to get back to service now here. So let's check our job activity. Service now. So that job completed normally. As a result, the successor jobs ran. Let's go check service now. I might need to do a quick refresh here. We'll see. So it's still true. It hasn't been resolved yet. I'm going to do a quick government for the sake of uh, brevity here. We're just going to do a quick refresh I might have to redo my filter yeah I'll look at incidents Incidents, filter, company, title, run. And so now you can see that active is false. That resolution code is 
closed, resolved by caller. Let's get more specific. We can drill in, preview the incident. With that, we can see that uh, this incident is closed by title caller. This was the unique identifier, the job run ID. This was the job name. Uh, let's get a little more information. And what's nice about this is it shows the original starting here. So this is when we did the create record, became true, and it was assigned to title, assigned to the group, the business service, the caller, the job name, right? That it was in progress, the unique run ID, and that the status at that time was externally defined. We reran the job, it went completed normally, it updated the incident. And so you can see here what got changed active resolution code, resolution notes, additional comments, etc. So active was true is now false. Resolution code closed, resolved by the caller. Uh, the resolution notes overrode and reran the job per the run book. Uh, the user input is it completed normally. So nice focused demo. Uh, you could get a lot more complicated than this. But what we've just demonstrated is the ability to one, uh, create an incident, two, update an incident, and three, uh, close an incident. Now in that regard, um, I will return for one more slide. As a summary, you know, title events can trigger ServiceNow actions such as creations, updates, resolutions, and service now events as monitored by title can trigger title actions, right? Title actions in order to uh, create alerts, job control, et cetera. Uh, one more follow-up would be in our alerts. Uh, here is where the incident, or an example of incident ID, for title event example with this run ID has been closed automatically by title caller uh, via title automation event action now that it has completed normal. And with that, I will stop sharing and hand it over. Excellent. Thank you, Fred. Alistair, I have just passed you the ball. Thank you, Rick. Thank you, Fred. Let me get this up now. Right, so the next item on the agenda is Tidal Automation Adapter for Informatica Intelligent Cloud Services, which is a bit of a mouthful, so we'll call that IICS. So I've got a mercifully few slides. We'll get into the demo just after a few uh, scene setting slides. So with Tidal, we've had a very long history of supporting Informatica workloads with the adapter for Power Center. And the customers for Tidal have seen the typical benefits that you get from a quality product. So we're able to leverage those investments, integrate your applications and save time, reduce errors and lower costs. And that comes from the ability to integrate those power center workloads into the overall Tidal workflow. Get everything joined together, get the single point of control. The, um, over the years, Informatica saw the need for kind of new data delivery and management methods. So we're getting the sprawl of on-site and cloud-based data. People are using new delivery methods. They want to see uh, uh, management of that data from different sources, whether that's on the edge of the cloud, from uh, in-house. And so Informatica developed IICS as a kind of integration platform as a service offering. And so because of that, we needed to build a brand new adapter for this to reflect that new architecture. We developed a new architecture for our adapter. So now we've got the two Informatica adapters and they are sitting side by side. But just again, to set the scene a little bit, I don't want to dwell on this too much. I think most people are experienced 
workload automation people. But this is the typical ETL kind of uh, no automation nightmare that we've got file drop boxes coming from external sources. We've got our business partners dropping in their pieces of information. They could be processed through ERP systems, PeopleSoft, SAP, CRM. And then before, after all that's happened, we're into the ETL, we're into the Informatica. Uh, components and that then moves into the data warehouse where we might be uh, shoving a whole lot more data into the business information systems finally to get those reports the analytics of that point there so it's a bit of sorry get a bit of background there Concerned that I'm still stuck on this. Okay. Okay. All right. Are we good? So, carrying on for this, the uh, the integrations that we're now offering for Informatica are twofold. So, the traditional Informatica adapter for Tidal was based on the Load Manager API. So the JNI or C manager was uh, connected to the Informatica Power Center, but there was some configuration for that on-site style adapter. And that meant that we had to uh, do things like there wasn't, it wasn't hugely complicated, but there was some maintenance involved, the installation of certain components on your master, the maintenance of those components, which made it kind of more dependent on the architecture of your uh, of your existing Informatica infrastructure and of the title. So the move to the cloud with the uh, IICS adapter means that we've simplified it greatly. So instead of being that tightly coupled on-premise installation, it's a REST-based API. It's loosely coupled, it's lightweight, it's low maintenance, and it gives you some of the more uh, advanced capabilities of REST-based APIs. So we're getting responses, for example, in JSON, CSV, and RSS. And that also gives us the uh, capability now to run those new formats of Informatica work task flows, that being the linear and advanced task flows. And we'll see some more of that during the, the demo. So uh, just before moving on to that, so that whichever type of Informatica adapter you're using now, we're getting the typical benefits. And I don't want to read through all of these, you know them. So it's centralized command and control, the ability to override what is defined in Informatica with your own title on the fly uh, parameters, be that uh, scheduled uh, in with parameters based on variables or hard coded in via the job definition. And we've also got the connection management capabilities, which means we can really control how and when we put that Informatica uh, adapter into maintenance mode, how many maximum jobs we run on it, and how we delegate the security and role-based access so that uh, we no longer have to uh, tell all the Informatica people how to, how to run this stuff. We bring it into the overall control of the scheduler. So let me break out of that and let's get in and have a look at how this stuff works. Okay, so we'll begin with taking a look at the uh, Informatica connection definition first. So here we can see this, how it's been simplified compared to the on-prem version. We've got a default runtime user defined here, which we can use for the connection definition. And of course, straight away, that gives us the ability to have some of our more advanced scheduling concepts. So it gives us the ability to uh, run in the agent or adapter time zone to use our time zone objects when we connect to job definitions and to set things like an overall job limit for that Informatica connection. Clicking onto the connection definition itself, we can see how simple it is now to uh, deploy the adapter. So based on that user, I have access to a number of deployment regions there. We've selected the US, and it's simply a matter of putting that URL inside the Informatica connection definition. We can hit test, we can make sure and verify that we are connected there. Also gives us the option to decide how long we want to pull those task flows, set a sensible interval there for the for the polling the task flows as they run in Informatica. And as mentioned, like any adapter or agent, we've got the ability to have outages and descriptive fields defined. So let's see how this works in practice. So I've tried to visualize what 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 might be a sample uh, workflow that includes 
Informatica. It includes the new format Informatica tests of linear test flows and advanced test flows, but some of those predecessor things. So you can see here just by the job types, we might have a job flow in a, in a modern uh, data center. You've got things like, you know, the, the cloud-based stuff. So we've got maybe web services we might be looking for. We've got the Informatica, the, the two types of task flows there. We might then be running JDBC jobs, uh, SFTP jobs, and maybe some homegrown stuff as well. Looking at that as a an overall workflow and joining all these things together, we can see the type of things that we're trying to achieve there. So we might, for example, decide that at the end of the day, we're, we're bringing in a whole lot of data from our shops. And then maybe we want to mash that end with some Twitter purchasing trends, see the latest hot products on the market. And then we can then uh, launch our two types of Informatica flows. So we've got our linear task flow there and our advanced task flow. And we can end up saying, OK, we've got the information we need. It's all been put into the reports database and we're just going to run our own management reporting off of that. So typically, you know, this this is with the with the, with the newer versions of, of, of Tidal, of course, we've got this nice enhanced uh, palette there so we can drag in all the different types. There's the two different types of Informatica adapter job that we could include in this. So getting into the nitty gritty, let's have a look at a linear task flow. And you can see here, of course, we've just got the one IICS connection defined, myself as the runtime user which then gives us the ability to have, of course, all the usual con uh, scheduling constructs. And now we can dive in and connect directly to Informatica. So it'll take a few seconds just to load up the different task flows that we've got in there. So the Informatica linear task flow is just, uh, as, it, as it says there, a linear task flow, just a series of tasks executed in that order. So you can see we've immediately got access to all that information coming from Informatica. And you know the one we selected there gets loaded down into the job definition. So of course we've got the ability there. We could va variableize horrible word, but we can turn it. Uh, we can use variables to uh, use for the task flow name. And we could also do things like maybe you want to run a specific task. So you know often the advice is to uh, break down the workflows into smaller single tasks. We can do that by the right click selection of the the, the single task flow. If we take a look at the task parameters, we can now have a search and override facility. So this is the idea that whatever is defined in Informatica can be overridden at the tidal level. So you can see the two tasks are there. We could say that we're either going to apply the uh, overrides to all of these uh, tasks, or we can select one individual task and it will you know, grey out the fields that aren't relevant. So we can then have our override information here about success warning errors. When we look at the job status, we've got the ability to fine tune what we determine to be the success or failure of that job. So we can base it on task flow status, single task status, and so on, you know, the, the zero. So zero source or target rows processed, you, you can choose from these. And on the task flow options, of course, again, we have the ability to uh, update the parameters there for error success warning using our variables. So that's the linear task flow. The advanced task flows in, in Informatica is the ability to have more uh, advanced processing logic within that work task flow. So um, it, it gives you the sort of more sophisticated logic between the tasks in that task flow, and we can cater for those as well. So again, the IICS task gives us the ability to turn that into a variable. We've got a similar range of possibilities for the task parameters. So if I do a search and override, so for all of the tasks inside the advanced workflow, if I took the second bottom here, for example, it's going to find the information about the parameter file and I can override that parameter file. And the advantage over this, this over using Informatica on its own standalone is that those uh, we don't have to republish the API for these advanced task flows you know, every time we make a one off change to it. So again, the advantages of Tidal are strongly felt in this in this integration. So that's how the uh, IICS jobs look. Let's just cancel out of that one and go and see if we can make that thing work. So again, we'll look at it in the, I'll just kick this off this way. And there we go. So this is now up and running. Apologies if you could hear any background noise. I think they've become unlocked down next door. 
So let's take a look at this uh, in the business in the uh, business view. Let's just get that a little bit smaller. So now you can see in some of the advantages of, of course, the new title interfaces. Now we get more information about the progress of this workflow as it as it's going through. So you can see the uh, workflow has gone active. We've got our Twitter trends already from the rest uh, the web service call. We've got our two IICS jobs running now simultaneously due to the logic, and we can see the progress as they move through those individual jobs. Let's just refresh that one. So now we can see that the linear task flow is complete. And of course, this is one of the, the, the massive benefits of TIDA. Perhaps something of the, and this has gone wrong. So you could utilize what Fred's just been demonstrating and say, okay, well, let's have an incident created in service now. Any of the uh, information that we're getting here can be passed as variables to the service now incident. And so suddenly you've got control over all the uh, incidents raised about Informatica as well as all the other stuff in your environment. So we've got our uh, output there, which gives us you know, pretty much everything. Let's get into more specific details. So we've got the run info is going to give us task level information. So that's going to give us, of course, the task details for this. So the summary level, we've got the success rows, failed rows, and so on. And from that, we could either dive in directly to the log for that task, or we can open up the task log there. And that's going to give us all the, the, the detailed in information about that individual task. One of the other things, of course, just like uh, we can do with anything else, we could let's just say we'll print that with output. So, you know, we've got the reporting is uh, available at your fingertips there. We've got all that stuff inside the print report as well. So you can see that you've got, as well as the uh, fine grained control, command and control of Informatica within the overall workflow, you've got all the uh, information for the operators at their fingertips. So again, no reliance on diving down into Informatica, into the guts of the work task flows to see what's been going on. Uh, pretty much the same kind of thing for the um, Informatica for the uh, advanced task flow. So again, just the, just the one thing there tells us it, it's completed. And um, that's 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 pretty much the same type of stuff that we get in the other one. So uh, that's pretty much it. That's uh, all all the features and functionality you get. You can see that um, we've still got both forms of Informatica adapter there. We've developed this one to reflect the new normal in in terms of people's cloud requirements. And hopefully, you'll see the benefits of using this within your um, workflows in Tidal. And with that, I will pass you back to Fred for the next section. Thank you very much, Alistair. Fred, I am passing you the ball. And you are on mute, just as a heads up. Can you see my screen? We can. Excellent. So I am experiencing some intermittent uh, internet uh, connectivity, so let's hope uh, that it doesn't happen right now. Uh, We'll be speaking about the Title Automation Adapter for SAP Process Integration, or SAP PI. I'm going to the next screen. And this is an example of all the different types of integrations that we have with SAP. Uh, we've had a relationship with them for decades, and it shows. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about SAP Process Integration, uh, but these are other manners in which we can integrate with SAP, uh, and we've been doing so for years. And then look forward to uh, new and uh, additional adapters for SAP, for SAP uh, process orchestration, uh, solution manager, and the HANA database. Going to the next screen, uh, the adapter for SAP PI. Uh, first, let's just remind one another what SAP PI is. is. Not everyone came to this uh, webinar uh, with interest in this adapter. You might not know what PI is, but basically it's an enterprise application integration hub. Uh, for application to application and business to business uh, scenarios. So with our adapter, you'll be able to integrate what are referred to as SAP PI external channel activities into your larger business processes, again, without custom scripting or development. Going to the next slide. Uh, these are examples of the types of uh, channels that that integration hub uses. So uh, SAP PI has send receive channels. 
So it might be for files, it might be for iDocs, it might be for JMS, it might be HTTP, it might be JDBC. Uh, these are just a few examples to give you an idea. And then remember that each one of these uh, could be multiples, there could be hundreds of these channels. Uh, and is, and uh, as a result, with that many different kinds of channels, that many channels uh, becomes an administrative burden. Uh, went to the next slide, should say controlling external send receive channels. SAP has recognized the need uh, for con externally controlling these channels. And so you can switch uh, to external control in a channel, uh, and then that would allow us to integrate. And thus, uh, that was the genesis of our adapter. This is uh, the support site where you could go and take a look at the adapter, take a look at the documentation, uh, download the adapter. So, our adapter can launch jobs, in this case, for ServiceNow, we didn't have a ServiceNow job, but for SAP PI, we do have SAP PI jobs. And those jobs can start an external channel, stop an external channel, start for a selected duration, and then stop. And so these can be used as predecessors or successors uh, for other types of jobs within a larger business process. And so, as you see here, sender channels, receiver channels. We've already talked about the different types, files, JDBC, JMS, HTTP, et cetera. And you know, between the time that something is sent or something is received, uh, there's transformation, routing, et cetera. Uh, next slide is continues to talk about the fact that uh, not only do we provide SAP PI jobs, but we also have the ability uh, to have an SI, SAP PI event and so we can monitor channels, see if they're stopped, see if they're aired, see if they're inactive. Uh, that again is an event based on our event action architecture. You know what happens next. We can uh, cause an action to occur. And so those actions could be used for notifications or other actions such as an attempt to restart an aired or stopped channel. And with that, we're going to go to a brief demo. And if you can, let me know when you can see my GUI. I can see it. Excellent. You're not having any delay. You're doing good. Perfect. So uh, let's go back and take a quick look at the definitions. So under definitions, specifically, uh, a reminder again, different types of channels. We're sending and receiving files or JMS messages, et cetera. Uh, to focus in. Uh, yeah, there could have been some predecessor jobs. Yeah, there might be some successor and predecessor jobs between starting and stopping a channel. Uh, yeah, there might be some successor jobs after stopping a channel. But let's go in and, and uh, just focus on the matter at hand. What does the adapter do? Basically starts, stops, and monitors external SAP PI channels. Uh, let's see how a job is created. So we have to pick the right connection. We have to have the right user. And since we had covered you know, that process before and the other two adapters, we'll kind of leave that behind and, and focus in on a SAP PI job to either start or stop. So you can see that this one is to start an external file receiver. I can double click and you can see how I got there. So basically, I can search for my channels, right? I can search for different types, JDBC, JMS. I can search for... Uh, communication channels, you know, the first 25, the next 25, the last 25. Uh, we're dealing with outbound two. So I picked that particular channel, uh, outbound two. Right now it's stopped. Uh, it's a party of one. It's a particular type of component. It's a file receiver, right? So in that regard, that's gonna be how we're gonna start it. I have another job. So similar that we don't need to spend a whole lot of time on it in so much as same connection, same user, uh, different action, right? We've already done the search. We've got the same channel. And this time, uh, instead of starting, we're gonna stop it, right? So let's go look at that in action. We'll go to job activity. We'll filter. Take a look at this job group. It's already run, yep. We ran some predecessor jobs. Yep, we started the channel, it completed normally. We take a look at the output. 
this is the brief output. So you have an opportunity to either get a summary of the output or the complete output. So on the start job, I just took the summary. You know, we got the main stuff we needed to know. Uh, hey, I was able to start outbound channel two. We can see that over here. All right, okay, that was the channel I wanted to start. More information here. The run info. And then uh, we ran some successor jobs, did some processing. We're done. Now I want to stop. And in this one, uh, I got a greater amount of output. I can see all the detail available in regard to uh, the party, the service, the name, the ID, the direction, uh, et cetera. So those were our basically start and stop a job. Additionally, I'd indicated that we could monitor a job. So let's go take a look at events real quick. I've set up a monitor, and you can see that I have a couple different ones here. Did one uh, error, did one go inactive, did one stop. What's my trigger history? And here's today. Uh, we just stopped. We had stopped one. I believe that uh, as a result, the actions were to send an alert that says SAP PI channel has stopped. And so if we were to go to alerts, we'd be able to see that SAP PI channel has stopped. So short to the point, uh, for those of you that are interested in SAP PI uh, in the same way that you can download the ServiceNow adapter, uh, the I ICS adapter, SAP PI adapter is also available. So back to uh, the PowerPoint for just a minute for one more summary slide. And I'll launch title jobs to start and or stop external sender receiver channels and monitor channels uh, to trigger title event actions such as restarting an error channel. And with that, I'll hand it back to the panel. Excellent. Thank you, Fred. Um, let's see here. A couple quick. Uh, it's, we'll try to get to as many questions here as we can. I think there's a couple slides here at the end as well, but uh, let's go into a few questions. I see a number of questions about what versions of title are required for these adapters, and then also what versions of ServiceNow does it work with? Fred, Tom? So in terms of title, um, we've been working with 654 and 655 um, in, for, for testing on our side. And um, I'll have to go back and, and you know, double check on it, but I believe both the, the current and last releases of ServiceNow, and I'm, I'm not ready to name the um, the city names off the top of my head, but we can follow up with that when we post the Q&A. Excellent, thank you. Um, there's a question about Informatica working on-prem or in the cloud, and it, it was working both, but it's two separate adapters to answer that question. So there is one adapter for on-prem power center, and then one, the new adapter is for in the cloud. And I'll have an additional comment for that is that there are some people that wish to take their on-premise install and place that in the cloud, and that can be done. And in that case, you would use the original power center adapter rather than the IICS adapter. Thank you, Fred. Um, let's see, a bunch of ServiceNow questions. So there's a question. Um, uh, let's see, how about triggering actions in title from ServiceNow? Is that a possibility? Uh, we demonstrated that in so much as uh, I was monitoring an incident. It got closed because I was looking for the incident to change from active true to active false. And so that event took an action, and the action was an alert, right? So the alert 
uh, I demonstrated the alert that said, hey, this particular incident with this incident ID has been closed as a result of an automatic action entitled. Okay. Some other actions could be taken, uh, insert a job, uh, you know, any action really, right? Just the, the way the event action architecture works is any single uh, event can be one to many to actions. So write to a log, send an email, insert a job, create an alert, send an SNMP trap, call a web service. All of those are representative of types of actions that can be taken uh, in response to any event, including uh, the ServiceNow event monitoring. OK. Um, within ServiceNow, when a job fails, a ServiceNow ticket will be created. If the same job fails again, can the original existing open ticket be updated with the other failed jobs instead of a new ticket created? Yes. Thank you. Let's see. In the externally defined to complete it normally event, what would happen if the job just completes normally? Would there be an error in the event log as there was? Um, oops, my thing just jumped ahead. Um, so I think the job does not go to externally defined and completes normally on the initial run. Would there then be no, then an no, error in the event log? So, so within title, uh, just would be business as usual, and within service now, no incident would be created. Okay. Thank you. And the short description field to find the incident for update. Can the search be short description contains job ID instead of equal? I imagine that that's more of a service now question. You saw, you saw me, for example, change the filter to company equal title, right? So when you're in service now, you have the ability to filter. You pick a field and then you enter a value. And so, you know, that's going to be a literal value as you uh, interacting with a GUI. So you could put in whatever sequence of characters that you want to match. And again, uh, that's more of a service now question regarding to how their filtering works. Uh, I just happen to use, uh, I liked the idea of using the uh, the job, the unique job run ID as the short description. And that is, you know, one of the fields that you can search for. But obviously there was, you know, umpteen different types of fields that you could be searching for. I search for, you know, the company called title, search for the assigned to, search for the caller, there's any number of different ways that you can slice and dice your search and service now. Okay. So with the automation of tickets, can ServiceNow capture the output of title jobs in the ServiceNow ticket? Uh, we would have to be careful in regard to what the limitations are in ServiceNow fields, right? But you saw me, for example, uh, create fields in ServiceNow such as uh, the run ID, unique run ID of the job, uh, such as uh, the name of the job, right? Uh, so there is a variable called job output. Uh, I can put that into a field and, and conceivably send it over to ServiceNow. My concern is there may be, you would have to know, you'd have to know your data, right? And you'd have to know your destination and you'd have to know that that particular field in ServiceNow is free form and accepts, you know, 4,096 characters or whatever, because I'm not sure what would happen if, if, if you sent a large amount of data and it didn't fit. I'm not, I don't know if it would get truncated or uh, if it would be rejected. Uh, so that's a nice experiment to try, though. <laughs> Excellent. Stacey, I'm going to call on you for this one. Um, well, there, there's a bunch of questions in here about um, the recordings of events. So I apologize, you know, we did go fast. I know a bunch of people were trying to take screenshots and we, we went quickly because we had a lot to cover here, but the recording uh, will be posted on the portal. Um, it'll be posted there by early next week. Um, there's a question about whether we'll send out a URL link for it. I, I assume we do that, right, Stacey? So we generally post an article on the portal that, that then uh, points to the recording, the slides and the Q&A. Okay. Okay. Excellent.
Thank you very much. So that will all be up there next week um, for you to uh, share with others within your organization, et cetera. You can reach out to me if you've got specific questions on how to get there, anything like that, feel free. Um, the versions, there's some follow-up questions on the versions. Did you say the title versions were uh, 654 and 655, Tom, that work with uh, the ServiceNow adapter? That, that is correct. And we've been working with ServiceNow, we've been working with ServiceNow for a while. I suspect we can go, you know, we can easily commit to earlier versions of 6.5. Um, I'm not, um, we have, we have not done extensive testing with 6.3 though. And, um, you know, I'll point out since both 6.2 and 6.3 are going end of maintenance, we're not putting a lot of effort into support, adapter support on older releases. If you have, you know, a need for it on an earlier release, then you know, shoot me an email and we'll figure out what we can do. So Fred, I, I don't know that we're gonna have time for this here, but there is a question about, can you show us how to connect to PI? I don't know if there's a, if you could talk to that real quick or if that's something that we'll just have to do a follow up with that question on. Uh, actually, I, I am sharing a screen. Let me just see if I can jump back in real quick. Uh... And we'll see if we can just show you. It's it's uh it's another easy one. So it's it's kind of the reason I didn't show it. It's pretty much the same as you know the other ones. Is that all you need is a URL and a user that you have embedded your PI uh, password in. And if you haven't, then it won't show up in this drop down, right? So the only user that I have in my run, quote unquote, runtime users that has an SAP PI adapter password associated with it is the demo user. So nothing to it, right? URL, and you need to know the URL, you need to know the user, and you need to know the password. You need to create the user first, embed the password in it and then go to make your adapter. And I think that uh, applies to all three of the adapters that we talked about today. Yep. Um, here. Um, and I think we have a few more um, slides in our uh, slideshow. Yeah, so let's, ru let's run through those real quick. And, and I apologize for those questions we did not get answered. We will get them all answered and get them out on the portal here for you, so I know there's a, a number of them that we did not get to, so. Um, but just to wrap up, a couple points I wanted to make uh, before we wrapped up. Um, we do send out a regular title newsletter. Um, this newsletter went out yesterday, as a matter of fact, and it talks about, you know, just what's going on within title, some of the events and things that we're doing, the different webinars and, um, you know, updates that we're doing, things along those lines. Um, the reason I wanted to bring it up was um, if for some reason you did not receive um, that newsletter and you'd like to, um, please contact your account manager and they'll make sure that you will get it moving forward. We have had a number of customers um, that reached out to us because they had, you know, we realized they had unknowingly opted out of it and so they weren't receiving it and they were wondering why they weren't. Um, so if you're in that boat, let us know. We'll resolve it for you um, and make sure that you're getting it moving forward. Um, next slide, Fred. So our next webinar, so, um, you know, we are committed to doing a monthly webinar, right? So there's gonna be a, a number of them coming up. We're trying to do one every month to just keep the lines of communication open um, as we can not get out to see as many of you as we would like face-to-face. -face. Um, we're gonna be uh, trying to, to make up for some of that by doing it this way. So our next webinar, um, I, think a, I think an invite went out earlier this week, but uh, um, that's gonna be Thursday, July 16th. It's gonna be an overview of our summer launch of the title product. Um, so come to that, hear about new features, the enhancements, so the new integrations that we're putting in um, to the title portfolio. Um, and then from there, Fred, if you want to click down, um, we do have a number of other webinars that we're talking about. So we want to do one for the title repository and give everybody an in-depth um, demonstration of that technology and how to use that. Um, we do plan to talk, do one about uh, new scheduling constructs within title, um, you know, what some customers are doing with things like job factories, et cetera. Um, we want to give an update to our roadmap. Um, there's a lot going on and a lot of new things that are um, you know, in the planning and, and development process right now. So we kind of want to update you guys on that at some point. Um, and then we talked about doing one with all of our integrations for SAP. So Fred kind of um, showed one slide that showed all the different integrations, all the ones that we've already built, and you know, some of the new ones, I think there's three new ones on tap 
uh, for us to bring out shortly. Um, so we want to you know, kind of present that to everyone so you have a full um, you know, feeling for an understanding of what we can cover on SAP. Uh, but, you know, we're open for your ideas and suggestions as well, right? So if you do have other topics that you'd like us to put into this webinar series, we're happy to do it. Um, you know, you can send us information, you know, send us your uh, ideas at info at titlesoftware.com. And, uh, you know, we will take those and, you know, as we receive multiple you know, requests for a certain one, we certainly will try to get it in, um, you know, to our webinar series. So uh, with that, I want to thank everyone for joining us today. Um, hopefully you found it beneficial. Um, and I will be uh, stopping us here, and everybody have a great day. Thank you very much.